It seems like everywhere I go right now, somebody is telling me to look at the ghosty terminal. I go to Reddit. I look at my comments. I'm streaming. I'm just browsing YouTube for various other things and see a video for the ghosty terminal. So I guess I should probably go and have a look at it. Here it is. It's a terminal. Wow. Obviously, there's more to it than that. Here we have the ghosty website. As a side note, can we please stop doing this? Please, if you're going to make a website for your application, I don't care whether it's a terminal, it's a text editor, it's a browser, or anything else, please just make a useful homepage. I know you want to do some fancy CSS, sure, sure, whatever. That's cool, but like... I want to know about your application. I don't need to see a marketing piece to convince me to use it. I'm already here. Anyway, not very important. Let's go to the documentation and let's go to About Ghosty. Now, under the About section, they make three major claims. And we're going to check if these claims actually make sense for the application. Firstly, native. The big picture of native is that Ghosty is designed to look feel and behave like you expect an application to behave in your desktop environment. Importantly, Ghosty is a native application for macOS and Linux. On macOS, the GUI is written in Swift and uses AppKit and Swift GUI. I am not a Mac user. I know that is the toolkit they use over there. I am not going to comment on whether it fits in over there. I focus on the Linux side. On Linux, the GUI is written in Zig and uses the GTK4 C API. Secondly, Feature rich. Ghosty tries to provide a rich set of features that are useful for everyday use. These can be split into two categories, terminal features and application features. Thirdly, fast. Basically, it offloads things to the GPU. How many times have you heard that before? Let's start with claim numero uno, native. As I said, I'm not gonna comment on the macOS version, but the Linux version isn't just GTK4, it is GTK4 Libid Waiter. I've said it before, I will say it again. A Libid Waiter application makes your application a GNOME application, not a Linux desktop application. The insistence on using client side decorations massively makes an application stand out on anything that isn't GNOME. This bar is always going to look weird. Also, Libid Waiter applications have massively rounded corners that just do not fit in with anything else. Also, because it is using client-side decorations, various other things like accent color on focus just are not going to work, with the exception of some things that force it to kind of jankily work. Then you have this issue common on KDE where I'm still not entirely sure how to fix it, but oftentimes you'll see a larger cursor than you expect to see. There's supposed to be a way to fix it by installing GNOME settings daemon and various other packages. I've done everything. I cannot get it to work. When I use a terminal, the very last thing I want to think about is the UI toolkit is written in. Basically, every other terminal is going to look more native than Ghosty ever will. Now, you do have the option of going into your configuration and then turning off window decorations. If you can spell correctly, Jesus Christ, there we go. If we close it and reopen it, it doesn't have the bar anymore. But, of course, it's not using server-side decorations, so it still looks out of place compared to every other application. It also makes the claim that it's using standard keyboard and mouse shortcuts that you're already familiar with. I think this might be part of the reason for a problem we'll get into a little bit later, but I'm also not entirely sure what that's supposed to mean. So, there is a context menu here. If we right-click, there is a copy, there is a paste. I'll get to the splits in just a moment. The copy is on shift Control c paste is on shift Control v I don't really think there's, like, a standard for copying and pasting in a terminal. Different terminals get around it in slightly different ways. I like using more Vim-like copy and pasting, but... I guess for what a copy and paste could be, that makes enough sense. Up here we have a hamburger menu. This has new window on shift control N and then a new tab on shift control T. Those seem standard enough. The problem is the missing and the undocumented keys we'll get into as we talk about the features. Now, 
very first thing, you probably notice it, my fast fetch application here just does not render correctly upon launching Ghosty. If I open a normal terminal, I use Alacrity here, works perfectly fine. Try it over in something like ST, perfectly fine. If I bring up the Cosmic term, works perfectly fine. If I try to run the application after launching, it also renders just fine. So for some reason, I guess it just doesn't render after this line here upon first launching. I have no idea why. I've tried to force an initial size, things like that, every time it does this. You might say, oh, you don't need that there, it's not a problem, but this is indicative of further things that might be a problem that I haven't discovered. As for other things though, there don't seem to be any noticeable rendering issues. A great way to test this is BTOP. Anything that has weird update issues is probably gonna be noticed with something that's updating as much as this, as frequently as this, and it seems fine. There are certainly issues with resizing being a little bit slow to draw. I've seen many terminals with this problem though, it's not really that big of a deal, and most of the time you're not really resizing a terminal anyway. Also, baseline feature, this is a true color terminal. If you're not a true color terminal in 2025, 2024, whatever year it is right now, there's no point even talking about the terminal. Now, when it comes to configuration, it doesn't appear to be a live updating terminal. So, I've got some keybinds in here. If we were to add a new one, let's, uh... Actually, let's get rid of this one here and change this to I. If we go and save this, that is not actually going to work. If you want to change the configuration while the application is running, you have to go into here and then click Reload Configuration or press Shift Control Comma. Once that is done, it will reload the config and then it will be good to go. Now, if you do modify the config and make a mistake, it is going to do the sensible thing of telling you that there is actually a problem. It'll tell you the line it's on, it'll tell you there's an invalid format. I would like there to be more information about the actual problem, but having actual error reporting is better than a lot of other terminals, which straight up just crash. This will also happen upon first loading the terminal as well. If you'd like to skip over it, you can go and do that. If you want to go and just modify the config and then reload it, that can also be done. One thing that differs from my terminal of choice, Alacrity, is this has built in, to some extent, terminal multiplexing. So up in the hamburger menu here, we have both tabs and splitting. So shift control T makes a new tab. We can go and click through those tabs. There is not an explanation on how to go through the tabs with your keyboard, but it is shift control and then the arrow keys. Also, there is a splitting system. We can split right with shift control O, and we can split down with shift control E. If I care about splits and tabs, why wouldn't I just go and use any other terminal and then use Tmux, which has all of this functionality bound out of the box. The bindings might be weird, but it's all there. Now, one actually really cool feature is this supports the Kitty image protocol. So if I run kitten, iCat, and then grab this image right here, we can render an image in the terminal. And it renders perfectly, it renders fast. This is nice, and I wish more terminals had this feature. This is actually a big selling point. The problem is a lot of the other really cool selling points, like Window VSync, are only supported on macOS. Window save state, again only supported on macOS. This is such a big selling point. And the final claim, speed. Honestly, this has kind of become a meme at this point. Every so often you'll see these terminals where they advertise themselves as the blazing fast terminal, the lightweight terminal, rendering with the GPU, whether it's alacrity, whether it's a lightweight terminal like foot, or so many other terminals, you will see them advertised as the blazing fast terminal. And you know what? Yeah, it's a fast terminal. As you saw with the uh, the pictures there, if we go and try to render an image, yeah, it works 
really, really well. But the thing is, so does every other modern terminal. The reason this became such a popular way to market a terminal is during the days of terrible VTE terminals where every terminal you saw was using that god awful library at the time and the library's gotten a lot better. This is what the GNOME terminals built around as well. It has made massive performance strides and really has closed that gap. It's still quite a bit behind but it's a lot faster. But the problem is terminals are such a lightweight application anyway, and the performance of systems versus the resources that a terminal is going to be using do not increase at the same rate. So eventually you get to a point where you're basically just brute forcing everything the terminal does anyway, and the difference in speed is pretty much negligible unless we're talking about like a lightweight Pentium system or a really old system. So in a sea of other performant terminals, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong, it's certainly not a bad terminal, but it's just no longer really a selling point. And don't get me wrong, this is not a bad terminal, but it has made the complete wrong choice of GUI toolkit for use on Linux. It is severely lacking in default being set up, worse so severely lacking in documentation of those defaults and look it might be better than what you get out of the box as the gnome terminal but from my experience it's frankly just another terminal it's not really that exciting but what do you think is this your terminal choice are you using st alacrity cosmic terminal or a bunch of others instead I would love to know, and if this is your terminal choice, I would love to know why. So, if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out our Patreon, subscribe to the Bureau Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I totally didn't forget to record the outro. That didn't happen. Thanks,